Hello. Aha. We have returned. Welcome to episode whatever of 10 million in this installation. Hey, look up there, Jamie. Notice anything missing? Oh, wait. Well, I see the rafters. Yeah, there ain't no roof in this bug. You know what happened? You do know what happened because we described it in the last video. You got to watch the last video. You got to watch the other know. videos. We're not gotta, even going to tell you. You got to watch the last gotta video. Got to stay with it. Um, cut the roof skin off this bug. Go back to the other video. Find out why. Very exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> so there's a lot of, uh, I, I guess, criticism, but also response uh, to the way that I'm cutting this. Some guys said, well, wouldn't you just cut the tunnel right there at the firewall before the pedals? That way you wouldn't have to mess with all the interior structure and the rods, etc. And to that, I was like, so what? Then, like, the floor is physically smaller inside. The pedals are six inches up. Like, you're completely up inside the car. You're losing six inches of headroom. Not for this guy. You're tall. Yeah. Could you do that? For sure. Yeah, you could just lose all the interior space, like all of it, for sure. I want the seats low as possible. That's what I'm up to. I'm guessing that's kind of how you've always lowered vehicles. There's, there's a million ways to do it. And the simple body drop, that's what this would sort of relate to in, in that the, the front suspension would stay where it is in relationship to the body car body sheet metal and then the rest of the body would drop or rather the entire chassis would come up but i want these seats low the car is going to be down low i'm a big giant creature i want to be sitting as low as possible so that's where we're at floor pans going to be on the floor where they should be hence the name floor pan so uh yeah what i'm up to right now is that big hunk of uh, channel that I described in the other video that you should watch. I have cut it up a little bit because I've come up with a semi, semi plan of what we're about to do to reinforce this whole tunnel right here. Um, I'll get into that in a moment, but this was a custom made thing that I found in the remnants pile. That's the only reason I'm using it. It's super heavy, like 3 sixteenths. And uh, I chopped through it. I made a couple cuts. It's going to reinforce this tunnel through where we're raising this shifter part. I'm going to retain this. This is going to be up here so that the shifter goes straight through as it should. But then the, inter the internal tubes, I'm only going to use two of them. There was a whole bunch of stuff in here for the heaters, for the emergency brakes, etc. For me, the only critical thing is having the clutch cable come through and having the accelerator cable come through. Uh, what I'm setting up here is a couple sleeves to keep them in alignment. You see, by raising it, uh, I, I, they don't come back together, right? They're far away from each other. Uh, I accidentally, over here, uh, I cut through with the grinding disc and I cut the accelerator tube. Uh, I found this piece of copper tubing. It's just, I think it's three-eighths. Uh, it slides over this perfect. So I slid it on there to get this back in alignment. I'm going to just put a tiny little dot of tack weld on there. And then you can see here how this works. Uh, it slips right over, just about perfect, right? So I'm going to slip it on there. I'll line it up. I'll slip it on there. And it's just bridging it. See, now it's one tube again. Get these little bends kind of smoother so there's no kind of weird angles in this. I want the accelerator cable moving as smooth as possible in here. And when I come in with the welder, just put one little dot. You can, you can actually attach copper to steel. Uh, it's not super strong, but one little dot on there will hold that in place. You read my mind, because I was going to ask that. Because didn't you say you use copper as... I've put, I've put bronze wire in the MIG welder mm -hmm. and welded two steel with it. It attached. Uh, 
not super strong. This is a sculptural thing. And I've done the same with copper on occasion. Uh, in some gate fabrication, you'll see these ornamental aluminum castings, and they'll have a little tab of steel in there. And uh, you can actually weld to that and sort of sculpturally fill. Uh, you cannot weld steel to aluminum, but copper kind of sticks. And in this, in this application, there's no real strain. See, these are slid over the steel tube just perfectly. So all the dot of steel is going to do is stop this from sliding away. I didn't have any round tube that matched the diameter of the clutch cable, but I had some square, and all we care about is indexing it so that that cable can go straight through. Uh, a little bit of gap in this tube isn't going to affect the clutch cable at all, so I just put this square steel on there, slide it right back over the other tube, and get them to index like so. And nobody's going to see that. That is really just straddling both of those tubes, keeping them perfectly in line. And uh, yeah, dot, dot of weld. And then just kind of make sure that I'm going to get the big wrench and put a little twist in here because this is a little bit out of shape. This is a support that kept everything in line. I did cut that to raise it up. But the whole idea is you don't want any hard bends for the cable to go around. Uh, the Bowden tube in the back is a flexible thing with a hard bend that does regulate the potential chatter in the clutch mechanism. But other than that, everything should be as straight and smooth as possible. Yeah, so you has got a nice little cruise right through. Get my big old wrench, put a little twist on that. So right here, you see, it's just a little bit of, a little bit of whoop de doo da. Just gonna set that in place. Put a little grip on it. Just a little twist. Just a little persuasion. Nothing crazy. Cool. So there's nothing happening in the tunnel, in this area now. The, uh, clut or the shifter rods coming through up here. So this is all free range. I'm going to put a new support right in here. This accelerator cable is still attached to the other wall. I'll make a little piece right now to attach that. All right, so somebody brazed this. That's what this hole was cut in the pan for. Somebody went in and fixed this. You can see by that uh, brassy gold kind of color. It's a common thing to replace these tubes if they get rusty. Um, I'm just going to come in here, set that piece of steel there, and put a mark here. And you see I'm just oversizing this bracket. It's about the same size as the bottom. It's just a big chunk coming up. So I got my Beverly shear. I'm going to do a quick nip on that. A little dusty. I've been doing a lot of body work in here. Mm -hmm. Everything's got a coat of dust on it. Sweet. All right, I'm going to get a clamp. We'll do a little weld. So see, I got that set so I can get a good, decent weld on there. And then I'm going to burn that braze right off as I weld it. Got the welder set a little bit high. Because <sighs> there's some rust. There's some crud. Is it going to be really sparky? Um, because of the, the rust? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to hit this top here. Let me make sure ground is good. It is. All 
All right, I got a nice grab on that one. Coming to the bottom. A lot of times with rusty cars, you'll, uh, as much as you try to clean the rust off, etc., you'll run into this problem where uh, it'll just push material away. And that's what I was describing with this br braze. And uh, what I do is I just go on the clean metal and I, I get a nice molten pool started and I try to like saturate the rusty area with the liquid steel, you know, with the shielding gas protecting everything. And it kind of burps everything out, all the impurities. You will have on the edges a little bit of extra material popping out, but the principal thing is to get Move on the other side. a decent weld. Let's see how much smoke is coming up. Mm -hmm. That's all the stuff from the brazing. So let that cool a little bit. I'm going to work right across this little brace. So yeah, I'm gonna wire wheel that, and you can come back around. Actually, come back around, and take a look, and then I'll clean it up, and you'll see what went down. So you see all that kind of smoke and soot that came off. That's uh, that's the brazing. That's the brass being evacuated from the surface. So what you're left with is a very solid weld. I'll hold that in place. All right, I'm just gonna dot these little tubes to keep them in place with the welder. We'll get onto some structure. Just one little tack around each surface of that solid steel or the square tube and now I'm just gonna nail this right to that steel plate that way there is no shake at all it's bracketed here very strong now it'll be solid here and I'll do the same with the accelerator cable There you go. So now internally, to recap, we only have an accelerator cable and the clutch. I'm not gonna use this fuel line. I just broke it off here. It's still attached in this little bracket. It's not gonna rattle. Don't do nothing, it's just sitting there. How come you're not gonna use the fuel line? Um, Because gas is so expensive. <laughs> oh, no, I'm gonna run the fuel line separate from this whole assembly. Uh, you want a nice, clean delivery of fuel. And I'm seeing some rust in here. If there's a little rust pit or whatever, maybe something happened with me cutting this apart, I'm going to run a fresh new one right there. Got through. it. So that's okay if it's not in the tunnel. It can be, like, above it. A lot of people a will like put... So see how this brake line is here? This uh -huh. brake line runs directly along the internal edge of the pan. And, and our mo most Volkswagens are like that, right, with the brake lines? Everyone I've seen. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I think I'll run the fuel line on the opposite side, right uh -huh. through. That way it's accessible. You know, it'll be brand new. I'll probably run aluminum with little little brackets to hold it down. And that's the story. Aluminum don't rust. I like it. We're gonna put this back in place much later because we're gonna have to build a custom shifter rod 
might be a little bit changed in shape because I do, I'm losing a little bit. See the angle here, about a half inch. So this is gonna get sectioned back a bit. So we're just gonna make sure once I get the new bushing that's on order, the new bushing here and the new coupler for the back. So I'm gonna put the structure back in place and this cap, as it is structure, it'll still go in later. It's gonna be a center kind of tier in this, simply because I found this material. You know, I, I mentioned I cut this one up. I did a little notch here too, similar to this, because I was thinking about accessing that maybe. If it failed, I'd have to cut that off, something bound up. So I did a little window that yeah. I could cap off and finish later. But you see how this thing is gonna sit like so, right? I'd net the back so the tubes come up through. Let me set up this side so it's a little more clear for the camera. So look at the thickness of this pan, right? Mm -hmm. The tunnel here, it's practically sheet metal. So I got this big honking plate, right? I mean, oversized. This is the chassis structure. And just because I found it in the scrap is the primary reason I'm using it. It's super strong. So that's going to go there, right? It'll be a surface. It'll be like a tunnel in the tunnel with a little opening for the tubes. And then this gets welded above to that. I see it now. Somebody stop me. Actually, somebody critique me. Tell me how I'm doing this wrong and how I could do it better, please. We need comments. All right, so I'm going to look at this. I'm going to have to do one big, ugly cut during this process, so Jamie's going to do the magic of editing after I line this up. I'm going to have to cut this thing with the disc straight through. It's going to be loud. It's not going to be entertaining. So everyone can just go get a frosty adult beverage while I make that move. So you see there's a bit of a gap in here. I'm going to try to minimize that. I'm going to bring my chalk and use that sort of as a gauge. We got to come from about here and drop this down just, just a wee bit. Let that fall in, try to take some of that gap up. So this will be the first noisy cut. I'll get the muffs. looks that did it that cut the gap right in half I had made a couple marks earlier these little chalk hashes because that's where I want the top corners to land see everything's a little bit of movie magic so uh, yeah I'm gonna tack this in place I'll get you your helmet yeah so I got this set where I want it in the rear Actually, I'm going to cheat that a little bit so I get a good root gap, as we discussed in the other videos. Set it and pin it. All right, lock that one. Come up front. Set that. Couple down the rip lane and end up closing this hole because we don't need that access. Again, I mentioned in other videos when welding thin to thick, I always put the heat on the thicker material. And in this instance, I'm letting the, the molten pool fall onto the thinner material. That way, you don't blast a hole in it. All right, so that's pretty stuck for the moment. Let me do one more here.
Now this will be 100% welded for sure, but that's a good start. I'm going to set up the other one and then I'm going to have to make this long cut to join them. Uh, I'm going to make the cut off center. It's just going to be faster instead of cutting both to meet halfway. It's going to be on the floor. You're not going to see it. Doesn't really matter. So now it really comes into play. You can see how these two slash cuts I've done, dude, allow these tubes to come up unobstructed. Yeah, so that's going to be there. And you see how I have these lapped on top of each other. Uh, there is a good 3 16ths gap from where this needs to land. That's why I'm going to mark it. That's going to want to be there. Straight down. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to cut this whole piece right out. It's going to be loud. It's going to be smoky. It's going to be so exciting when we return from this commercial break. <laughs> See you in a minute. Pretty good hunk of steel. And save that. <laughs> it's pretty incredible how you like cut perfectly straight. It really is just experience. The, uh, the key to using a disc like that is to not twist it. Everybody says, oh, the, the wheel of death, right? It only malfunctions if you twist it, if you put a torsional strain in it. As long as you hold it with confidence, perfect, the aligned, they last and last and last. I think that's gonna be the new Dance move craze, the torsional twist. <laughs> we watched a documentary on Cape May, New Jersey, and Wildwood, New Jersey, and how it was the doo wop capital of the Americas back in the day. Interesting. And Chubby I just, Checker. I just bring Chubby Checker and the twist to conversation because of that. So you see uh, now how they're going to come together. Perfect. Well, let's not overestimate things. Pretty good. Perfect. I don't know. That's a reach. That's a reach, miss. I understand the compliment, and I thank you for that. Let's not get carried away. Put a little hanger on there, a little tack. Set this into position. I have to get a little lever, a little screwdriver, and move that over. Oh, yeah, right about there. So 
I think it should be fairly apparent as to what I'm accomplishing here. Uh, so it's as if the pan came through, see, to, to a grab that's more than just having a top cap and grabbing it. So it's like a double level pan now. Should prove to be quite strong. I'm gonna grab my little uh, clamp and level these up. One's a little higher than the other. I call this the little clamp because you should see the big clamp. This one's very stout though. See, that just puts it right into position. So when you tack weld, those are kind of, um, they're malleable welds. So you just kind of do it to glue it into space, into the space that you want it. Oh, and no, then no, you... no, to glue it in space. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. That's why I'm making, I'll make it a riff on your information there. I know. My questions are not developed, guys, because literally never seen this before. Ever? Never. Ever. Do a little twisting and turning these floor jacks before I do because this pinning it like this is kind of the final final order so I'm going to do a little level up check a little shim yeah there it is I just happened to notice that uh one of these jacks had sagged a little bit. I was uh, making some statements in the last video that you should have watched if you didn't about a thing that levels things, sort of like a level. It's called a protractor. It's got a magnet on it. You can get them. I got this at Sears like a million years ago. See the little red thing that swings? Science. Tells you the level. Tell you the angle of the dangle. So I'm going to do this for me, not for you. Then I'll <laughs> do it for me. Boom. That's pretty much zeroed out. And I'm going to put this here. That's pretty much zeroed out. See it? Yep. There's a little padding on this tunnel, but it's about where it should be. And they all look to be on the level. Checking that. Just a little bit off center. It doesn't only work when you set it like that. Uh, so this, the, the little... No, I'm making a joke about how you're moving it around. You're like setting it down with purpose. Well, I mean, it's authoritative, is it not? I'm doing a presentation <laughs> here. Like it only works if you set it like that. Like if I set it... You know what? You know why? Oh, watch. it has a magnet on it. Hey. It has a magnet. That's cool. It's fancy stuff. I'm a pro okay, okay, here. Wait, let me do it just once. Doesn't that feel better? Yeah. I did not know it had a magnet on it. That's cool. This is my protractor. Hear me roar. <laughs> I didn't really know it had a magnet on the bottom of it. That's cool. Yeah, well, like, there's a lot of things about me you don't know, and we're just getting into it. I got some tools you never even heard about. I'm very sure of that. All right. Just making a little bit of a gap in here. There it is. Put a quick tack next to this. Whoa. You got ground. There it is. Let's dot it out, shall we?
you notice how I move the heat around? Yes. Because if you weld one straight bead, it's going to shrink up. It'll actually turn this whole thing into like, yeah. Like saran wrap, like when you melt it and it goes. It'll shrink up, exactly. Like that, yeah. So these guys are now placeholders, as you so professionally observed. Dang. And I'm going to dot in some more on each side of this. I might want to get into some welding. And a lot of times what I'll do is I put in some random tacks. Say there was just one and two. I find the center, boom, move on, find the center, and just center, 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 center. And they come out looking pretty even. No measuring in that. You just kind of eyeball it. You just split each gap of the tack welds in half continually. without getting the panel too, too hot. You don't want to get a big red area because that's going to shrink up a lot. There is a time and a place for burning a big hot weld when things are in a jig or otherwise, but right now we're welding this massive structure in comparison to the delicate pan tunnel. <clears throat> so this is, if this giant piece changes shape, it's just going to yank all that sheet metal like nobody's business. So this is, this is the anchor right here. We don't want to distort that. I feel comfortable with this much grab on the tunnel. It's about 32 inches or so. So right here where this mismatch is, I'm gonna do similar to what I did in the rear. I'm gonna put a plate right down in this slot. You can see right there, it's got room. And it's just gonna dead end right there. That way that just stays as it is. Maybe I'll shoot one gusset out, but the shifter rearward will be all the remaining sheet metal from the original bug. So this is what I was describing. There's just two tacks here, right? So split it, put it right in the middle. Putting the heat into the thicker material, letting it fall down and then split the gap again. And split it again. And again, and again, and again, on to infinity or until it's actually fully welded. Yeah, and then again, this little window here is just getting to that tab. The last thing you want is a bound up accelerator cable and anything. So if there is a little binding, I'm going to nip that right there and change the whole thing out. But for now, it's an access port. I'll just weld it shut after I run that through there. Make sure everything's smooth. You may be asking why just the accelerator cable? Did you just ask me that? I was I was thinking it. You must have read my mind. Because there's such a delicate spring on the accelerator cable that any binding will affect. Imagine you step on the throttle and it sticks full throttle. You're going somewhere, right? Rut row. The clutch has a massive spring in it. That really will work through any kind of little misalignment and things. So, you know, there's a little, a little more give and take in the clutch arrangement. It's a big, heavy thing. Heavy cable, but the accelerator, you want that silky smooth. And in comparison to American cars, engine in the front, this is a long throttle cable. And uh, 
another fella mentioned, well, what you did was just trap the torsion rods in the body, right? Because these typically, these caps are down here and you're able to slide the torsion rods out. And he seemed very confident of himself in that statement. They don't look trapped to me. Oh no, they are trapped. Are they? How are they gonna slide out here? Oh, okay, so because you did that, it did trap the torsion bars. Yeah, if it was a stock bodied car. Well, that's the whole thing, right? It's not going to be a stock bodied car. All right. You got to wait for it. This so it technically be... is trapped, but because yeah. it's a custom. Oh, for sure. You'll definitely address that. Yes. Yeah. If this was a stock bug, there's your problem. Mm -hmm. But you know what? This isn't a stock bug. It's going to be something else. It's a creation. Yeah. But just pointing that out, I mean, yeah, good observance for sure, but y'all got to get freaky. You gotta think outside the thing, because that's what's about to happen here. I'm gonna be low. I think I'm gonna build a lower Volkswagen Beetle. Okay, so this is tacked. It's quite warm at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna get into making this front plate. Just happen to have another thing from the remnants. This is eighth inch. Still considerably thicker than the pan material. I don't need a giant piece of steel in there. So that's going to slip right in. Oops. Got the notch a little bit for that tube already, I can see. Shoot, maybe I'll use some thicker material. Weld up that gap. I won't have to worry about that gap. Oh my God, let me see. Oh, I do, right here. Perfect. Did that work? Ooh, that was just about work. How about that? Yeah, just makes it. Yeah. So do you have to have something that fits exactly in there or can you do the whole gap welding situation? Exactly, as I mentioned. So this material is pretty thick. So yeah, I mean, an eighth inch root gap on this, so thick, it'll be fine. Oh my God, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. The old root gap. Yeah, this is cool. I'm gonna actually just push those brackets down. I mean, the tubes down just a hair and uh, That'll be quite secure. I'm going to mark this with chalk. Put this on the bench and cut it. I'll weld that right in. I like it. It's going to hang out over here. I'm just going to set this place in. Over just a little bit on the bottom. trimming on that but at least I could weld to it so would you trim it in the car then oh sure a lot of times when I'm just working on the fly like this it's just about getting the material see how these in the back all this loose these are all just rough out pieces so you oh, just okay so you just trim it in the car yeah if, you know you had a CNC machine or whatever that could cut perfect things but for me I just kind of get it I don't even know what a CNC machine is um, neither, neither do I, as evidenced by my toolkit. <laughs> Let us know, guys, what they are. So here in this orientation, the shrink is reduced because to pull this out of shape with this angle is not going to happen. That's why I'm able to just shoot right down. 
So does it actually welding that way? Does it make it stronger then? Because it shrinks it all up and kind of pulls it all huge, together? Yeah, not to talk over you, but there's a huge amount of tension in there right now. Oh, okay. So no, you're not talking over Learning, me, learning how question. to balance that. Right. That's why I'm going to hop over to the other side while it's still doing its thing. Ah, okay. So it kind of is that idea, the theory of the shrink wrap and melding it all together so it's just one. And actually a MIG weld is is very, very rigid uh, in comparison to, say, a gas weld or a TIG weld. So, yeah, in this application, this is mega strong. And that being said, not taking away from TIG welding, it's just that that, uh, it just makes a more malleable weld. So for hammer finishing, etc., or even for something that's uh, more flexible, you know, this, this is just a very, very uh, rigid weld. <laughs> There's a lot, lot to be discussed in metallurgy. I'm going to weld the plate to the original pan on this side of it. Or the tunnel, rather. Lord, it's a fire. Uh, far away. Nobody be alarmed. I'm Rock confident. Row. I just don't want to mess up my chalk. Oh no, it's a chalk. You know what that little fire means? You're doing things right. Oh no, there's just less stuff to clean up later. across the top and complete this weld. Hoo-wee! So you see how hot I burned that. Yes. It actually took down the top edge a little bit. And that's all good. I'll just dress that up with the grinder later. And this, in this orientation, the shrink, all that's doing is just everything's just like. And you want that tension, correct? <gasps> Don't get me started. Yes, I want that tension. The good kind of tension, not the other kind. I'm gonna let this tar board cool down. You see it's starting to drool. Hence. Yeah, it smells a little stinky over here. So I'm going to let that cool off, and I'm going to hit this with a gusset next time. Because that ain't going to break. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Not going to break. I'm going to explain one thing. I'm going to kick this welder off, and I think we're about wrapped. Any questions? Nope. Thank you. <laughs> let me talk, say one last thing. This is our shifter rod, as you can see goes through here, mates up to the transmission nose cone. There's a new coupler on order. You can clearly see that this thing, that's the old bushing, it is long gone. So I'm going to uh, cut this off. We're going to clean this whole rod up. That is in here. We have to change the length, so be it. And then next time, the piece that holds the shifter and the bolt surface goes back on top. And everybody asks, how do you do that? What's the response? Magic. Or watch the videos. <laughs> Stay tuned for next time. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> per use. Happy summer!